welcome to Drinks Coach. Vine Sack, Drinks Coach UK, all lowercase, one word. Hit me up on social media. You watch this on YouTube, have a look for the bell, tap on the bell on subscribe, you'll get notifications of future shows. Please tell me what you think, good, good or bad, I'm serious. Uh, give me thumbs up, thumbs down, um, any requests, any questions, just, just let me know. Um, uh, in the run up to Christmas, we're going to have a few quirky ones, which hopefully will make it a little bit less boring for some of you. Um, and uh, for reasons that will come clear uh, towards the end of this bit, um, Fortnum and Mason sent me stuff. Now, if you get anything from Fortnum and Mason, it's a good day. When I went to my very posh school, some of my very much posher, very ri much richer friends would go, oh, Dadme sent me a hamper hamper what's a hamper i didn't even know what it was and there'd be a box big wicker basket from fortnum's full of booze and potted meats and everything all very old school amazing stuff because fortnum doesn't do anything less than top shit everything they do is best in house everything there are very few brands in this world that you can go that means quality and I'm talking above, I'm not talking Waitrose here, we're talking Berry Brothers and Rudd. Up until recently, some of the cheaper stuff is a little bit more suspect. But, you know, if you're going to buy Berry Brothers and Rudd own label malt whiskey, it's going to kill you. It's going to be brilliant. If you're buying Berry Brothers own label champagne, it's going to be stunning. And just down the road from Berry Brothers, pretty much, is Fordham and Mason. And they're the only other brand I can think of in London where if somebody said, I said where do you get your mince pies from? Fortnum. Oh, well, of course you get them from Fortnum's because they're the best. Best of the best. Top gun. Um, so imagine my delight when uh, um, Oscar Dodds, the senior buyer for this sort of liquor for Fortnum's and his sidekick, his Sanja Panza Matt, very kindly sent me a bunch of stuff and it's all Fortnum own label uh which is really really exciting uh and i'll explain why i'm doing this at the end but this kind of is a bit like an avatorial isn't it because they're all Fortnum's products but i think broadcasting how brilliant Fortnum's is in a time when everyone's suffering um it still has its merit right and when you talk if i just say the word Fortnum's, i can hear sleigh bells it's so christmassy they make the world's best mince pies I mean, with the possible exception of that mince pie that someone made you, actually made you. Um, and I've never had one made better than Fortnum's. So it's the reason why they can charge £12 for six mince pies. Anyway, best in the world. And we'll talk about mince pies more in a moment. What I've got here is the range of fortified and sweet wines that Fortnum's currently list. They also sent me um, half a litre bottle of a marmalade vodka which was very nice, but you're going to have to take my word for that. We've also got four fortified wines here and a liqueur. Okay, so, number one, we have two sherries. No port here. They do sell very nice port at Fornham's. They're in bed largely with Kneeport and some other very, very good port houses. There's no flies on their ports either. But what they've sent me is two Madeiras. You're right, I've never done a show about Madeira. This is a chance for me to at least introduce the subject. And two sherries. Have I done a show on sherries? Fuck yeah. I did two really great shows on sherries. Go back, look through my list, put in Drinks Coach UK, Sherry. Um, and the second show about Oloroso and Old Wines are the ones that's probably more relevant to this particular show. Um, but uh, without further ado, I'm just going to tell you what these products are and go through them. Um, this first one is a VORS sherry which means it's a show that's over 30 years old and this one actually just says Fordham Mason Amontillado 30 years old VORS very old rare sherry <laughs> it's very very little left uh once you get a sniff on this it's kind of like crack you just have to keep going um so 90.5 percent alcohol so you know we're talking about heartwarming um loin girding stuff okay look at that not much colour there. And when you think about old fortified wines, you think about dark, lots of colour. But this is bone, bone dry and comes from a bodega. It comes from a, a, a sherry merchant, actually, if you're going to talk about its long history, called Bodegas Tradicion, the traditional bodega. 
I was incredibly fortunate about five years ago to be invited out to Vin Noble, which is the big sherry trade show in Jerez de la Frontera, which is where sherry is kind of epicentered. And we went out for dinner and we got to eat local uh, delicacies. And the dinner was actually at Bodegas Tradición. Um, and I shall never forget the night. I was with my lovely wife, who was allowed to come with me, uh, such a special occasion as it was. And we were eating tono rojo, which is bluefin tuna, which had been fed from our salt to beak with sardines in a big net in the sort of Gibraltar Straits and was the finest tuna, including anything I've had in Japan, that I've ever, 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 ever tasted. It was mind-bending. Uh, so that sets the tone of how amazing this, this, this event was. Um, 95% of the tuna that they catch actually gets sold in Tajiki Market in Tokyo uh, and it's sold in Japanese restaurants so um, yeah, really tip top stuff um, they also had a little art gallery walking around and they owned a few nice things, there was Velazquez, there was Goya there was a Goya on the wall, there was a triptych of something incredibly old um, it was just an amazingly um, enriched artistic experience uh, but really when I look back and think it was a question of look, look what we've got Come on. it was real kind of chief pimp stuff and uh um their sherries are amazing but they've only really been back in the game of selling sherry relatively recently but they have bought old um barrels of sherry old um saleras in their entirety so they hit the ground running suddenly bodegas tradition came out of nowhere having not really been on the uk scene for many 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 years not decades certainly centuries um and they've come out with these cherries that have an average age of 30 years old or more um, incredible stuff that it is. The, the, the Fino sherry is extraordinary. I think Fortnum's Fino is made by Tradition, which is an amazing wine. About half the price of this. Well, it costs the same, but you get twice as much. Um, yeah, so let's not muck about. It's a half a bottle of sherry for £28.50, which sounds like a lot of money. But if I was going to tell you um, that I'd bought you a half a bottle of whiskey that's 30 years old, you could add a naught to that, couldn't you? So uh, extraordinary once you've tried it. And it, and you can drink it slowly over a period. It doesn't have to be drunk in one hit. Uh, you've, you know, you don't have an afternoon or, or like with an old expensive Bordeaux, um, a few hours to drink it at its best. You know, it, it's, this is of exceptional quality. quality. In fact, it even says, 30 años y calidad excepcional. Um, yes, I couldn't agree more. Tradición, amazing. Little um, anecdote about Bodegas Tradición. Uh, when I was out there, the nice gentleman, the name escapes me right now, who was actually Mexican, who was the UK export manager, um, took us up to their office where they have all their old files of all their orders from Tradition going back right to the beginning. And there was a note written by Samuel Pepys saying he wanted to cancel his order of sherry because there was a fire in London. I shit you not. A real piece of paper that I've seen with my own eyes. That's history, isn't it? So we're drinking history. It goes back hundreds and hundreds of years. We were drinking a lot of sack, as we called it then, dry sherry in those days. It's just so intense. It almost, it, it's kind of like there's an implosion in the mouth. The flavour just starts to grow and grow. Once we swallowed it, figs, salted caramel, preserved lemons, persimmons. It's just like a whole basket of Christmas shit, just getting bigger and bigger in the mouth. There's torrefaction, which is a lovely French word for roasted coffee. Oh, it's just, oh man, £28.50. You, you can sit with us, this is a thimbleful. You can sit there, honestly, in front of a James Bond for half an hour, just sniffing and dipping your tongue in that. It goes so far. Fantastic product. Right, what's next? Well, another sherry. Sherry of yore, should we call it? This is Fortnum Mason's 12-year-old cream sherry. What is cream sherry? Well, most sherry, if it's serious sherry, is dry sherry. You have to add something sweet to make it not sweet. And if you go back to my show, where I explain the styles of sherry there are, there's one sherry which actually doesn't come from Jerez, actually, but most of it actually comes either, if not from Jerez, from Montilla, which is a region down the road. And it's like diesel oil. It's insane. Right. Let's try this. Okay, so it's darker in colour than the 30-year-old because it's had some of this added to it to make it very slightly sweet. 5% maybe. But this is basically what well, probably started off as an Oloroso, which is a more oxidised style than this, with a bit of PX added to it to make it into 
what people used to drink, which was cream sherry. Uh, Bristol cream is, is, a, is a shadow of those kind of wines because Bristol cream is only two or three years old. Perfect balance. Perfect balance. The kind of thing you can drink with virtually anything that you have at Christmas. Come in from a cold walk, a little glass of that, maybe a mince pie, maybe some nuts, maybe a bit of cheese, a bit of ham, whatever. But absolutely delicious. Savoury, marmalade nutty. You can taste the real deep, deep dates and caramel, the medjool date quality that PX has, which is just that kind of like seasoning on top of what is otherwise a very savoury and delicious Oloroso sherry. Right, very, very quickly, let's talk about Madeira or introduce the idea of Madeira. Madeira comes from the island of Madeira, which is kind of just north of the Canaries. It's owned by Portuguese, not the Spaniards. And the capital, Funchal, has loads of lodges in it where they age this extraordinary wine. There's very few vineyards left. Most of the island is given over to banana production, although I believe it's starting to grow back again because people are starting to realise what they're likely to miss if it becomes extinct altogether. These are both made from a variety which is usually used to make the sweetest kinds of Madeira. There are four grades of Madeira, if you like, or four great varieties, which kind of give an indication of the amount of sugar that's going to be in them. The driest, which has still got quite a heft of sugar in it, is called Serchal. Serchal, or Serchal. Then you've got Verdelio. Verdelio is a variety in its own right, and I love Madeira at that level of sweetness. Maybe just a bit sweeter which brings you into Buau, which is medium sweet. So you've got dry Cerciel, medium dry Verdelio, medium sweet Buau, and at the top of the tree is Malmsey, which is the old English name, and you'll see it mostly written in the proper name now, Malvasia, which is a great variety grown all over Europe and is a very, very special variety indeed. And the sweetest Madeiras are made from Malvasia, which these two are. There's a variety called Tinta Negra Mole, which is a bulk variety <clears throat> of which 90% of all Madeira that's drunk every day is made from that, which has a little bit of Sir Shiala Verdelio added to it just to give it a note, a no, a, a sort of like a sense of, 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 that it comes from those styles. But it's it's very much not at the same standard of, of uh, Madeira as Sir Shiala Verdelio, Buell and Marmsey. There is another one, very, very rare, called Tarantes which is incredibly detailed and very minerally. For me, it tastes a bit like if you took a Buell and took all the flesh off its muscles and made it much leaner, streakier, it would taste like a Tarantes. Okay, so first one here is Malvasia Reserva. It says this was made in 2006. It's extraordinary. Look how pale that is. It's hard to believe it's even made from Malmsey, really. This is in my patented uh, Dartington Crystal port glass, which is perfect for this. It's sweet and savoury at the same time. How are these wines made? Well, the unique style of Malmsey, or the unique style of all Madeira, is that they allow the wine to age with the bung out of the barrel. So the wine oxidises very carefully, very slowly in the right conditions. If it's a premium wine, it's just left in barrels in different parts of the, of the lodge, in the loft areas, where the air can come in and out, where the humidity goes in and out. And the wine slowly oxidises, but keeps its freshness. It doesn't lose its acidity. It doesn't go all nutty and horrible like a bottle of white wine that's been left out too long. It keeps its vibrancy and its excitement, partly because it's been fortified. This is one of the bargains on the high street in this country. And this is a single cask Madeira. And they buy a single cask at Fort Mason's every year. This is a Malvasia Colletta 2005. So this is a barrel which was made in 2005. So the wine is 15 years old. And it's a single barrel chosen from one of the great port houses, which is Barbeito. And this is one of the Christmas specials for me. <sighs> Look forward to trying this every year. The nose has that telltale nuttiness. Nutty, sweaty, slightly kind of sappy wood note. when you put it in your mouth. It's like a stepladder came out of a private jet. It just lifts you to heaven. It's got these delicate, sherbety sparks of acidity. There's this taste of coffee and nuts going on. At the same time, there's a fresh, almost cooked, it's like sliced pastec and ocean melon, juicy fruit to it. It's an extraordinary drink. 
And the great thing about this is, because it's been oxidised, I could take the cork out, stick that on an agar for three weeks, and it would still taste the same. So if you're worrying about the fact that this costs £35 for half a litre, don't, because that's a lot cheaper than the equivalent whiskey or brandy. And, the, and this is a wine that will keep. You just keep it in the cupboard for years and it won't change. So, going back to prices. £28.50 for one of the greatest cherries on the high street from one of the greatest cherry producers, cherry, cherry markets. 12-year-old cream sherry. This is, um, I think it's sold in small bottles for about £11. So it works at about £20 a half bottle, I think. And this is uh, the Christmas pudding, own label, Fortnum's... Um, uh, Madeira um, is £16 a bottle and this is 35 squid for half a litre bring us on to this which is a liqueur called Reverend Hubert's Winter Gin Liqueur what is this? well somebody I know had a great grandfather who was decorated during the First World War and on the side of his water canteen he scratched a recipe for a kind of puncher a kind of liqueur that would make the drink they were making in the trenches, potable, but swallowable, by adding fruit from the local area. If he was stationed in Turkey, it would be like persimmons and figs and things like that. If he was in a more European country, it would be other kind of fruits. Um, and in homage to that, Tom, and a certain other individual that's in this room, and that's only me, created a winter liqueur made out of gin. We use premium gin. I say we because this is my product and it's in Fortnum's, which is the reason why they've been so sweet with all the other things. So this is going on to the next show where I'm going to tell you all about this product. So keep your powder dry. But here we have one of the nicest liqueurs you're ever going to taste, made with a chopping board, a kitchen knife, and a potato peeler. So when I taste, peeled 8,000 oranges and 4,000 Amalfi lemons to make this batch of Reverend Hubert gin liqueur. And I'm looking forward to telling you all about it next time. See you then. Thank you.